most states keep track of any animal vehicle collisions. And they, you know, keep the data and they have a map with red dots of wherever there's been what. And then you open the map and it's covered in red dots. <laughs> and you're going, wow, you know, this is amazing. A lot of the time when you're driving and you see roadkill out on the road, what that tells you is that a road was placed in an area that animals would normally frequent. They're trying to get from one place to the other. The idea of building a wildlife crossing in the West, uh, that happens quite a bit because you have large herds of migrating animals. In Iowa, there are a lot of deer, but they don't necessarily migrate on a specific route. Most people, awareness, would focus on deer because that's going to damage their car. A coon, possums, squirrels, those kind of things, you know, we might feel guilty hitting them, but the deer we're going to give attention to. Looking at it from the species side, they're getting funneled into certain places because they don't have choices. And if they were given a different choice somewhere else, that crossing might not be as dangerous. The northern map turtle is a big river species in Wisconsin, part of our natural heritage in the state. And so uh, as, as a conservation biologist working with turtles, it's my goal to keep them around. Map turtles in La Crosse, they really have to go through a bunch of hazards. During June primarily is, is when they, the females come out of the water and they have to cross uh, numerous roads to kind of find a suitable nesting area. And, and so usually a lot of these roads that they cross are basically bisect wetlands from uh, these upland nesting grounds. The turtle crossing signs in, in La Crosse, those are primarily meant to serve as kind of an education and awareness campaign. Basically, female turtles, they're the primary source of, of how turtle populations uh, maintain themselves and increase. Even if you take out one of those individuals from a system each year, you're basically taking away potentially 30, 40, 50 years of reproduction. If we want to see wildlife and if we understand that our future is directly dependent on that wildlife, then uh, we need to reconsider what the crossings are for. And we tend to think of them as big overpasses or big underpasses for all these big things. But it's as simple as the turtle going underneath the road. Uh, we are in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Um, primarily, uh, we're going to be checking out a site along State Highway 66, which is uh, on the southern end of Jordan Pond. It's kind of a, an area where there's a, a dam and a spillway and, and two to three different intersections in the area. So we have a lot of turtle crossings back and forth. It's a four-year study with the Department of Transportation, Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, and the University at Stevens Point. Once we enacted this study and kind of learned more about their movements, we're finding out these turtles are sitting in the pond portion and getting swept over the dam. And so they want to get back into the pond and so they're crossing it at higher rates than they normally would be and, and therefore getting killed at higher rates too. When the first year of the study began, we noticed upwards of 60, 70 dead turtles on the road within one year. And since that fencing and the wildlife crossing underpass has been put in, we're seeing closer to 10 to 20 turtles getting killed each year versus 60, 70. You're still seeing mortality here, but it shows that it's working effectively and hopefully we can see turtle populations rebound as a result. You have to look at turtles in terms of the bigger picture, and the bigger picture is turtle populations are crashing like crazy. The whole system is what supports you, the whole system. And so when you start taking pieces away, the system begins to break down. We also need to understand these wildlife crossings are important for the other beings themselves to continue. When we need to look at a project, we have to determine all of the environmental impacts for a project, including impacts to farmland, homes, and protected species. So in the last, I would say, 20 years, we've started looking a little bit more at the movements of some of the animals and where they want to cross roads and trying to accommodate that crossing. And part of that is for the safety of the traveling public and the safety of the wildlife. Right now we're at the Rock Island Preserve in Cedar Rapids. This project came about because we extended Highway 100 and we had a population in the preserve of state-listed Blanding's turtles. 
and we began to track those turtles so we could figure out their movements related to where we were going to put the road. Our culvert is actually unique in the sense that it's a wet, dry crossing. We designed it to hold water on one side where the turtles could swim through it, and on the other half of the culvert, it's dry. Either turtles or other wildlife can cross on the dry side. Our maintenance people usually are the ones who deal with animal mortality on the roadways. We have had almost none on this particular stretch because we've been able to fence it off so effectively. We had an intern working with us that put a trail cam up on each side of the culvert to determine what types of animals were using the culvert. She was able to capture deer, snakes, wild turkey, mink, uh, ducks that swam through the culvert. And at one point, she was out here downloading her trail cam and she called me and said, oh my God, a turtle just swam by me. That was good news because then we we were certain that they were actually using the culvert. The most obvious reason that anyone who drives on state highways should care about wildlife crossings is for their own safety. But on top of that, preserving wildlife is important and it should be important to everyone. There's a wildlife crossing right where you live. I don't care where you live whether it's the squirrel going up the pole and climbing on the wire over the street and coming down, or you know whatever that creature is that you relate to. You know, I wish we didn't have to think of it in terms of money, we could think about it in just overall health, human health, wildlife health, you know, the health of the place we live.